Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about some Chiefs offensive players that I think the Washington Commanders should try to sign this offseason after the Eric Bieniemy move. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Also with that like button and the notification bell as well. All three of those things take a couple seconds, but it really would make my day if you could do that. So as all of you guys know, the Washington Commanders hired Eric Bieniemy to be their offensive coordinator, also to be their assistant head coach as well. And with that, he's going to be pretty powerful for the you know Washington Commanders. I mean, he has that assistant head coach title. He's going to be getting paid more than he ever has before. But, you know, he's going to have some responsibilities that, you know, Scott Turner just didn't have. Like, Scott Turner really had no say besides calling the plays. He didn't have much say. Like, when they traded for Carson Wentz, he didn't really have much input on that. That's what was reported later on, I think, in the, you know, late part of last, last season. It was reported that, Car you know, Scott Turner really didn't want Carson Wentz. I assure you that. You know, Eric Bieniemy is going to have input in some of the guys they want in free agency. And not only input, but like he's going to definitely have a decent amount of say in it. And he's going to be able to get a few of his guys. Not like Scott Turner where, yeah, he probably got some of his guys like Taylor Heineke. But those were very low end. Like when Taylor Heineke was signed, he was out of the NFL. So that kind of, uh, you know, signing is what, you know, Scott Turner got. I think Eric Bieniemy will get a little bit more power in terms of guys he can sign. So that brings up the question, you know, will they try to bring in any Chiefs players? I don't think they're going to overhaul the offense with Chiefs players because first off, you know, we already have some solid weapons. And second off, you know, you don't want to bring in everyone from one organization like Ron has tried to do with the Panthers. But still, I think there are some players that the Washington Commanders could try to target from the Kansas City Chiefs that I think would make sense for the Washington Commanders. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So the you know, it's been on the uh, screen for a while now, but these are some of the main free agents from the Chiefs. Orlando Brown Jr., Juju, McCole Hardman, Blake Bell, Andrew Wiley, Jarek McKinnon, Ronald Jones, and a couple others as well. So we're going to go through a couple that I would you know consider targeting so let's see one i think jarek mckinnon is a solid target for the washington commanders you know i love brian robinson he's a great or you know he was a good running back for us you know especially you know on short yardage situations he was very good and i think he will be a very good rb1 for the foreseeable future and i think gibson's a good compliment to him but i also think that we need to add another receiving back because Gibson is good and we'll see how Eric Bieniemy uses him because Scott Turner did not use him great as a or did not use him well as a pass catching back. Maybe Eric Bieniemy will do that. But also JD McKissick probably his career is done or might be done in Washington, so you might need to add another back whether that's a guy in the draft or a guy in free agency you can add one and I think Jarek McKinnon does make your team better he's a great great guy in the locker room people love him he is you know he has a lot of experience and obviously has worked with Eric Bieniemy for the last what couple years I think he's been there for at least this past year and did a pretty good job uh, elite in pass protection and good receiving back 54 passes and backed that up with nine touchdowns look at his total stats not a huge rushing guy and we don't need him to be like he's if he comes to Washington and he makes the team which I think he would be or he would do he's not probably going to get 291 you know uh, rushing yards if Gibson and Robinson are both healthy I mean Robinson's probably going to get over a thousand and you probably put Gibson at like five to seven hundred so McKinnon's probably going to get to that 100 to 200 yard range and that's fine what we need him for pass protection and you know receiving and this past year for the Chiefs 17 game in 17 games which is you know big for him he played all 17 games had 56 catches for 512 yards and nine, nine touchdowns so in total had about 800 yards and you know a little over 800 yards and 10 touchdowns so good for him there and he has struggled with injuries you see like from 2017 to 2020 he was basically out of, or 2018 and 2019 he was out of the league uh, because of some just brutal, brutal injuries. And, you know, yeah, he, he, he had a good year this year for sure. So I would not mind him bringing in maybe at a reduced role. Like he's not going to get as many, you know, 
rushes and he's still gonna obviously get receptions i don't know about 56 probably in between probably in that 30 in between 33 and 51 maybe like this 43 receptions an average of like seven per uh reception close to like 300 to 400 yards because gibson you know does receive the ball a little bit as well and he has the potential to do at a high level we all know he's a receiver in college and the robinson isn't amazing at uh you know catching the football but he he can do it you know he can do it one of his i think his first touchdown was a receiving touchdown just a great great truck there against the houston texas but jerick mckinnon for me is an option another guy let's see if i have the thing orlando brown i mean i don't really know if i would love this because it's going to be a lot of money but i think the player is very very good he allowed one pressure on 31 pass blocking snaps in uh, Super Bowl 57, he's only tackled to make the Pro Bowl in each of the past four seasons. So he's been very good for the last few years. Can be at your left tackle. He's a franchise tackle. He's going to hold it down for you. And you don't have to worry about that left side. But paying him over $20 million, which is probably what it's, it, it definitely is what it's going to be. You're not going to, you might not be able to play Deron Payne or Cameron Curl or both if you do that. They, they're, the commanders are an oak, are in an okay cap situation especially after hopefully they release Carson Wentz and a couple other guys and restructure some deals but still signing Orlando Brown would be tough in terms of what else you can do but I would consider it because he would do wonders for this offensive line and if you sign him you can move Leno to right tackle or just move on from Leno I mean at that point he's not going to play left tackle for you if he doesn't want to play right tackle then just move on from it that is something to consider there as well. Orlando's a great player. Young's got a lot of potential. I mean, he's already reached that potential, but I think he could even go a little bit higher than that. He is another guy. Let's see. A, another guy, Andrew Wiley from, you know, he's a guard and tackle. I think he played both guard positions and right tackle for the Chiefs this year. Played really, really well at the Super Bowl. He would probably, he would, he would be an upgrade over the guards we had. And I think would be a solid option at guard i really do he worked with eric Bieniemy. he's solid and at the very least is good depth but could start for you and that would be a good veteran option to bring in at the guard position they could do better though but he's a guy that i think they definitely could bring in uh you know steve says matt collins is another option says he can be the wide receiver for upgrade from the others but will cost a couple million extra uh, point man and bunch sets really good on special teams linear athlete with good speed patch that up and draft so uh you know shout out to steve right there for the analysis on mac hollins uh, there was another name that i missed he said let's see justin watson is another guy juju it's just not gonna work here i mean he's a good player but we already have terry we already have curtis samuel we already have Jahan dotson and even cam sims and you know, um, Diami are solid. Like we don't need another guy. He's gonna want to be a two at the least, and he's not. He's four on our team, maybe three, but probably four on our team. So I rather just move on and uh, or not even move on because we never had him. But I would just probably stick with the receivers we got or potentially go after McCole Hardman. And I know some people are gonna be like, oh no, we don't need him, and maybe we don't. But you know, obviously play callers have different philosophies and different thinking and perspectives on things and maybe eric Bieniemy absolutely loved mccall hardman but since you know andy reed was in the building and was you know his boss he couldn't necessarily use him as much as he wanted to and if that's the case you know mccall mccall hardman would be a solid option second round pick out of georgia he's 24 years old i believe this past year only had 300 yards but only played in eight games, was injured, and had four touchdowns. And then in 20, on average, he gets about 580. About 580 is what he gets. First year, 540. Next, 560. Last year was 700 and a couple touchdowns. He's very quick. You can use him in the run game as well. They probably don't need to because they already have Curtis Samuel. He has over 100 yards, uh, 100 rushing yards in his. Uh, four years here but one thing that i think would be very underrated for him would be the return game kick returning eh he only had one return this year he's not gonna you know go crazy for you as a kick return he can in his rookie year he did a pretty good job at an average 26 yards of return and took one to the house one touch one touchdown 
But, you know, he's not amazing. At, I mean, he was in uh, his rookie year, but after that, wasn't amazing. But also just didn't have a ton of returns, only 9 in 2020. So you can't really get a great sample size there. Uh, 2 in 2021 and only 1 this past year. But I think he would be a solid option. But punt returning wise, looks like he, he, he you know, is a solid punt returner and does it a decent amount. You know, this past year only had 6 returns, but... He did have, he missed eight games, so he missed over half the season, so if you add that, that's probably close to 15, what he did in 2021, he had 13, in 2020, had 25 returns, uh, averaged about seven, had a touchdown, and then his rookie year, averaged about nine yards per return, all of those are better than Dax Milne's averages, and you know, Dax Milne was, he wasn't explosive or anything, but he didn't fumble the ball, which I really uh, valued, and I like that, but I think that we do need, if we can find an upgrade we could uh, we should try to get one. McCole Hardman would be that. He would be able to do, be our full-time kick returner and punt returner and then also be a potential weapon on offense. I don't know if we need him at receiver, but he's not going to sign here unless he really unless he really has a chance to be an impact player. So I don't know. That that's the real question. Is he going to be able to have an impact when we have Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Curtis Samuel, who, in my opinion, are, are a decent amount better than him? Maybe not. Maybe Curtis Samuel, you could argue, is close to McCall Hartman because I mean McCall Hartman did have 700 yards last year, but I still would take Curtis over him. So I mean, he probably thinks he's better than Curtis, maybe even better than Jahan. But I don't know. He there's probably better opportunities elsewhere, like the Bears have no receivers the Ravens they don't do well with receivers but he would probably be the receiver one or receiver two there like there's a lot of different teams that could use receivers more than the commanders and will potentially be more appealing for someone like McCole Hardman so that's kind of my take on the situation there so those are really the main ones again Juju not too interested in Blake Bell tight end slash receiver he's a, he only had a couple catches this year I like Andrew Wiley um, can play tackle or guard for you. Um, uh, Nick Algretti, eh, not really. Jerick McKinnon, I, w- I would be interested in that. Ronald Jones, not really. Justin Watson, not really too much. So that's kind